Did you already say the the title of the episode? A night One in night in sick bay. Yeah. No, I kept a making, night in sick bay. I kept making that joke uh, about that taco song. One night in Bangkok, over and over again. I must have made it like ten times throughout the city. What's the name of the man? Uh, taco. It is. Yeah, the eighties song. One night in sick bay what? makes a strong man humble. We did a night in sick bay, Enterprise, season two, episode five. This is, this is a season two episode. Episode five in season two. This is what we want from the show. Episode five in season two. This is the beginning of the show. I mean, granted, there's like fucking thirty five episodes. Season? It's season two. Episode five. Yeah. How many episodes per season? Um, I can check that over. Right. Season one. Had. 26 episodes. Yeah, so there are 31 episodes in, so it's not really the beginning. So this is Jerry's first uh, first dance with Star Trek Enterprise. So one thing I learned about that, about Enterprise, is I like that Vulcan chick. To ball? Mm. She's a, she's a good looking woman in real life. I'm going to find you a picture and then I'm also going to put that same picture up. No, oh, make sure it's the one where she's in the gym, because that's one I knew. No, the actual actress. There you go. Oh, yeah, see? That's a pretty lady. Alright, so anyway, what was this episode about? Uh, they're on some There's, sort let of... me just tell you, there's better episodes of Enterprise. I don't believe you. There is some really good you episodes. You said this was the best episode of Enterprise. No, I didn't. walked it. That's this how was you the worst the one I So, Hoshi, the interpreter, to Paul, the Vulcan chick. The dog, Porthos, and Captain the, Archer, <laughs> Captain Samuel Beckett. <laughs> they go to a planet and they deal with some people to try to do some uh, diplomacy, and they fuck up. Real they bad. need to acquire fusion injectors. injectors. Fusion injectors, because the ship holds five. It can run on four. It'll break on three, and they're down to four. <laughs> and that's ten minutes right there, buddy. That's a 10 minute scene right there. <laughs> Ooh, it's boring. This whole episode's boring. So the dog pissed all over their sacred f trees. Right? Well, first, uh, they're, what, they go down to the thing, they fuck it up, they come back, and they're decontaminating themselves. Which involves stripping down to your underpants and physically rubbing goop all over your fellow uh, crewmates. Well, that, that's not the first time that's happened. How is that not supposed to lead to intimacy? Jerry, you don't understand. These are professional Starfleet officers. And there's multiple people and the doctor's watching. So how does that not lead to intimacy? Let me try to break it down for you. The doctor's there. It's a sterile environment. You're rubbing this goop on each other uncomfortable. I'm just saying the sexy Vulcan's rubbing me with whatever. I'm going to have a physical reaction and I can't be held accountable for that. Well, you, so you're on. You are a member of the crew. Yeah, I'm. Just, I'm putting myself in, in that. Uh, all right. So what? What? What kind of officer are you? I'm the uh, officer of spanking and discipline. No, 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 no. There's no such officer. What do you mean? Are you, are you security? Why are you there? Are you the captain? Not now. What? Not now. What are you? What are you doing? I'm fantasizing about being officer, spanking, and discipline. I would love to know that. So the dog is sick. He picked up some kind of germ on the planet side, and everybody's free to leave decontamination except for the dog, named Porthos, named after one of the three musketeers. Well, they keep calling it the four musketeers. Well, D'Artagnan wasn't one of the three. No, but he keeps calling it. Calling it that. By the end of the book, they're the four musketeers, to be fair. The, uh, what's the name of the aliens? Dr. Fox? No, the aliens, who they went to visit. The Croatians? The Croatians. So when the Croatians, when the Croatones, the Cro no, they were the, the Croatones the demanded, he demanded another apology, but Archer's all broken up about a sick dog. So... It's really making him act like a fucking man-child. Well, not only that, but he's like me, and he wants to bang to Paul the Vulcan. <laughs> Which, dude, I could... Oh, man, I couldn't be near her. 
I have no work would get done. I'd be just distracted all the time. I'd be, but dude, it'd be atrocious because I'd be like a seventeen-year-old kid. Did I'd you be see when all the time. when they walked out of the uh, quarantine and she had ass cheeks hanging from yeah. her shorts? Oh man! I, I, I wish she didn't. I wish she was just wearing fucking regular clothes. She was wearing the same underwear Marty McFly would. To wear. be fair, I hope she's an attractive woman too. I'm not gonna take that from her, but to Paul. She's slapping that meat around. Ugh. Vulcan meat. Yeah. Now that is logical. Archer decides to spend the night in sick bed with the dog. And, and Dr. Dr. Flox. Flox, that's it. He does not want him there. You get the whole episode you can tell. Flox? Yeah, he doesn't. No, see, I, I disagree. I oh, think he, he liked that. He yeah. liked it, yeah, like that. Why do you think he him? kept talking to him and waking him up? Because he doesn't have com- company like that the whole time. And he oh, I didn't deal. think That's of him. That's how I interpret Oh, I didn't that. think of him as waking him up. I thought of him as being kind of annoyed. No, that wasn't an accident. Oh, I didn't even realize that. Well, plus, the, have you had to spend overnights in the hospital ever as a patient? No. It, this is the least restful experience I've ever had in my life. They are waking you up every fucking, like, hour. To talk to you? Yeah, well, to talk to you, to take, do all kinds of, maybe that was just me and my particular experience, but I couldn't get more than an hour's sleep. And I learned in there that sleep pills make me crazy. But none of that was happening to Archer, it was just, it was his choice to be there. Yeah. So he kept waking, this was a very, let's it, let's uh, expand on the Doctor's character episode. I'm sure I would have appreciated that more if I'd seen more of the show. This be, this this mm. I don't know, man. Mm. This being my first episode, like this isn't the episode you should watch first, obviously. I mean, aside from it just being a bad episode, it's a complete There's exposition. Better ways they could have introduced stuff. They could have went to his planet. I find that the best way to introduce or ex- expound on a medic character is to have, I don't know, some kind of medical emergency that requires them to be at the forefront. Like, um... I like... I really like Dr. McCoy. Oh, There's a lot of Dr. Bashir stories that were pretty good, and I love the Doctor from Voyager. I want to jump out of Star Trek and say a show that did the medic very well was uh, Band of Brothers. I don't remember. Because uh, it was during the the Battle of the Bulge when they were bombarded. It was in the snow when they were getting bombarded with artillery a oh, lot. Right. It was during that part. So uh, they pretty much focused on him trying to get supplies for the guys. Oh out of yeah, the ship. yeah, I remember. And they did a really good job of it. Like, I don't know. Th- this could have been a high tension episode because you figure anything involving a medic, every decision is life or death. No, this was grueling. But it was long. about a dog. There wasn't even like flashbacks to like the great times he had with his dog, or no. or uh, some kind of alien thing on the ship, or some kind of B story. There was no B story that would have been great. So one thing I thought, no, the B story of the thing was his sexual tension with DePaul was the B oh, story. Think, yeah, but that's so weak. Mm-hmm. That's so weak. I didn't even, I didn't, that didn't even register as the B story to me. I thought that was that's still it. part that's of the A story. Getting. Nope. There should have been some kind of action thing going on with the aliens. Like, he put tr- Trip in charge of the whole thing because he needed to stay by the dog's side. So there was some kind of added tension. Like, did, does, will he stay here or will he deal with this situation? Or No, instead the whole episode he's complained about how he's got to apologize for offenses he legitimately made. He made offenses. Some of their demand, demands are kind of... What? Some of their demands are kind of... Uh, no, I mean, he rolled up on the planet with his dog. Yeah. First of all. First, I don't think I. First of all, as a dog owner, I won't. I don't think I would take my dog to another planet unless I knew. First of all, it would be fine there. Yeah. Second of all, you don't know what their. This is your first meeting with their with their people. You don't want to fucking. Dogs are unpredictable. You don't know what they're gonna do. What if they go over and sniff the fucking alien also, guy's dick? Also, on top dick? Of, on top of all of that, when you're meeting a like, this is kind of off the page here. But uh, when you're meeting a species for the first time in, in the Star Trek universe, do you think the first thing that would happen is you talk to their ambassador core? So, you know, to, to establish diplomatic relations? Yeah. What if the dog shits in the floor? What if he sniffs the crotch? What if he starts humping fish legs? What if he does what? Starts humping their fish legs. They were, they were fish people? No, I was thinking of the fish Are guys. They in, the they I, I can't they not think of them anymore. <laughs> They're a handsome race. Right. Is there anything else you want to say about this? Um, they fixed the dog. 
Oh, there is something I wanted to talk about. Throughout the whole episode, uh, Dr. Flox, Flox <coughs> has cages of live animals all over sick bay. And I'm, I'm commenting to Mike, how, to Mike, how the hell are you going to have live animals in a place you perform surgery in a sterile environment? They're just pissing and shit and getting their fur and dander all over the place. Well, that bat was out just flying all over the place. But they answered the question later in the episode. They were talking about some of the chemicals these things excrete. And then even they went as far as to do a transplant from the, a pituitary gland of a lizard into the dog. Yeah. And that's how they saved the dog. It, I kind of like Dr. Fox's sick bay because it's very... Um, I like that character. I didn't mind him as a character. He's fun. There's a really cool episode I'll have to show you when... Uh, oh, it's actually explaining the fucking head ridges of the Klingons. I don't like that. I didn't care for Scott Bakula. Oh, he's really I, whiny and I terrible. don't like that. He's a terrible I like, I like him a lot that. in uh, Quantum Leap. I mean, that's all I can really... What else was he in? Next episode is... I don't know how to pronounce it. I think it's uh, Sukansi. It's a Voyager episode. It's um, the one with the rock. Does it got Chakotay in it? Y yeah, but it's 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 really a seven of nine episode. Oh, stay tuned for Chakotay, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Chakotay sounds like a delicious food made of chickpeas and some kind of roast chicken or pork. Some yeah, get order. Oh, it's on the specials. Oh, it's got the specials. All right, I right, so check chicote. it out. It's it's uh, chickpeas. It's roasted chickpeas with uh, hot red pepper. And Is it like a hummus? Is, yeah, and roasted chicken. Oh, so it, you, uh... Oh, what's that nice Indian bread? Um, yeah, naan. Yeah, you got nine. it, you so got it. Nine. You're, you're right, seven of naan. Oh, that's our new Indian place. Seven it's our Star nine. Trek themed Indian place. Come to Mike and Jerry's seven of naan. You can't believe. You, we will curry your favorite. Delicious chakotay. We will curry your favorite. Delicious chakotay. A little sprinkle of Neelix. Now see, you think the trick is to spread the chicote really thick? It's actually the less chicote you spread on the naan, the better it tastes. We have a delicious cut of Guinan. <laughs> you did a little, you did a little uh, trump there. What was, um, you ever see, uh, God, we're getting wet. Good night. <laughs> what do you think, Lenny? What does it smell like? It actually smells kind of good. Yeah, I, I, Frank, uh, it smells like bullshit. Depressed.